The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the country. It's Mark from Solicam. We'll be doing our Solicam Live 30-minute free training today. With me, as always, he's glad it's Friday. It's Kevin Reichel. <laughs> Aren't we all glad it's Friday? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, so to continue this week's theme, because I guess we have a theme this week, is geometry, how it can help on the programming side of things. And today we'll be covering some turning and how you can use geometry to help you on the turning side of things. And we'll start with this file. Um, a lot of the files you'll see today are from our tips and tricks videos where we've covered this in short videos, just showing you how to do little bits here and there. Uh, and I thought I would just collect them in this one video, one, uh, one themed video where we can see how the geometry helps on the programming side. This one is a good example of how you can go and edit the target profile. So you can see my solid, my original solid, but if you take a look at my, my current target profile, see if I can kind of, yeah, well, I'll leave it on like that. Uh, you can see that line right there and there. That is actually me telling the software that I don't want this face to be here. I want it to move in a little bit. So if you want to overcut your part, overturn your part, you can go into the target profile, click on this guy over here. You can right click on this one. And when you go into editing your part under cam, remember cam is what we add to the Excel cam external so that you can add additional sketches and that sort of thing. But in turning, it's also where we keep the envelope that becomes your stock and the envelope that represents your target. So if I go and actually modify that sketch, I'm modifying what SolidCam's checking against for things like the target profile. Um, in your solid verify, it looks at the solid. In your turning, to make sure you're not gouging your turning, uh, it looks at that, that envelope. So that's why if you were to just draw a line outside of there, it would give you the warning of you are gouging the target or, or it won't let you calculate at all because it's just it's doing its own self gouge checking. But if you modify that target, you're essentially telling it to look at that instead of looking at the solid. And how that results is if we go into simulate, here's my solid verify. Let me just angle this a little bit. And if we play through this, there's all my tool paths. It looks very much the same, except that wall has been moved in. If I show my original target solid, you can see there as I click that on and off that I've overturned that face there. So there are options in each of the tool paths to do this sort of overcutting and that sort of thing, but they're usually in one direction. So I would have to add a Z offset or an X offset. I would have to do some sort of modification uh, in terms of the internal external corners like we've seen before with the break edges option. But if I want to just overturn uh, one face or change this shape at all in any way that is not reflected in let's say the solid, um, then you can do this sort of changing of the target profile uh, outside of going in and actually changing the solid itself. So there, this could be useful in certain applications. This one actually was a result of a customer request to do just one particular face a little differently than, um, than some of the other ones. So that's how you could actually go and uh, modify your turning tool paths you actually literally go in there and just re-sketch it. So that's why this one, this line right here is from the original uh, target profile, the one that gets generated when you parse your model. Same with this line here. This line and this line were added in the sketch. And I just remade it everything and then it just understood that to be your target profile. So that's one thing you can do on the geometry side to assist with your programming. Uh, let's go into another example. Now we've talked about manual turning before, uh, but just as a quick review, when you go to add turning operation, there's one called manual turning. And in the manual turning, there's really nothing here. You're choosing your geometry, you choose your tool, and that's pretty much it. And that's because in manual turning, you actually generate a sketch or you, or you draw a sketch and you get your tool to follow that exactly, very specifically. So if we take a look at this uh, manual turning tool path, and, and uh, I think this one was used in a KevCam video, right Kevin? Yep. This is one of your, yeah, yeah. Um, so you can see here that I have a whole bunch of lines here and I'm not just doing a simple offset. In certain instances, I have a larger step over. In this case right here, I'm not even following the, the, uh, the angle of 
this face here. I'm actually getting it to just do a 90 degree turn. If we take a look at that, I actually just chose all those geometries there. So each one of those in order represents the movement of the tool. My tool is just a simple turning tool. And under technology, we're just telling it to just basically follow that, uh, that drive geometry. If we take a look at that in, let's just do a simple host CAD. The tool comes down, it follows that line. And as you see, it's following that line exactly. So it's, it's not doing step over, step down, or anything like that. It's just taking that reference point of that tool and following that exact chain. Uh, even more so, if you take a look at when I did the offset, this was a simple SolidWorks offset, uh, these two lines here. So when this guy goes past the stock, it's almost like it's a waste of, of movement. So if I were really trimming this up, I could actually go in here and actually trim it in my chain. But since I didn't do that with my manual turning, in this first pass, I'll be trimming or cutting a little bit of air. And in that next pass, I'm actually just exiting out before I even finish the part. So when you do your manual turning, you have full control. Whereas if this was a regular turning tool path, it would be monitoring the stock. It would make sure that it, to extend geometry to the end of the stock. It would be making sure that I'm actually uh, turning this thing the way I want. And this one in, in particular was a good, uh, good example in response to a customer's request where um, they maybe have some surface hardened or strength hardened material where the first couple of turns, they have to be done a little differently because of the surface hardening, but then as they get closer and closer to the center, it's a little softer, so they can take heavier cuts. So this is a good example of where you can regulate your step down in addition to just controlling completely the movement of the tool. And that was simply just the, if we review sketching very quickly. Again, if we go into here, I have just a simple sketch under cam where I added all those sketches and that was just a, um, um, an offset contour from uh, SolidWorks. Okay, any questions on those two? I got one that would be kind of cool to try is let's go ahead and get those sketches tangent with that line. Those uh, looks like just the two end ones, that one that's too shallow and one that's too sh uh, long. Oh, these two? Yep. Okay. And what I'd like to do is try it as a circular pattern. So see if we can, and I, like I said, this is solid cam live, so we're, ha hasn't been tested or anything like that, but it'd be interesting to see if we can actually get it to follow like almost like in a, a circular pattern for the retracts as well. So if we need to keep it contained down for the retract, it will follow that exact path. Does that make sense, Mark? Uh, a little bit. So where where would you want to add the so circular from pattern that, to replace it? From that long line there to the, oh. uh, yep. Did I lose you? Are you there? Yep, I'm here. Uh, okay, so what what do you want to do with this? Trim that long one right there. Oh, trim it to the, to the stock? Yep. Okay. There we All go. Right. And now I'll go ahead and extend that other line out up to the stock. Okay. Perfect. Now, go ahead and pick your new uh, manual turning. So new pick geometry. a new geometry? Yep. Okay. So now what I'd like you to do is grab that second to top one. Nope, the one. Second. I'll let you, how about I send you control? There you go. And that way you're not giving me commands over the, over the phone and everyone's <laughs> trying to, what? Listen to him. All right. He's trying to direct you, man. Here, and then if we do, point to point, come to here, to here. Oh, I see what you mean. So one continuous tool path yeah. rather than retracting. Yep. Okay. And like Similar said, to what we did yesterday with the uh, the man, the the mill where I, I dictated the whole travel of the tool. Yep. And let's just do point to point. So 
So I guess while Kevin's doing that, so what you would do in this case is you can sketch the whole thing, like Kevin's suggesting here, if we just actually added lines that represented everything. So uh, if we wanted it to retract a certain point and then have a long path to the next one and then retract to that point and, and have another line, you could actually add multiple lines in the same instance, but then what you would have to do there is right click and do select other, and then you'd have to choose your appropriate line. Uh, but you could overlap a whole bunch of sketches there and get it to work like that. But with point to point, this is actually going to come up and be a little quicker because all you have to do is just keep clicking on each individual point. Now for the moment, they can work. The moment of truth. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay, so I guess with that being said, with the manual turn, it can't be a, a loop that goes over itself in one continuous chain. So if this is something that we wanted to do, what we'd have to do is come over here, chain this, come up, come over as one chain, and then create a new chain from here over and over that way as one or chain. you know i was thinking we could do like we did like i did with the the part that we reviewed yesterday because remember i actually had to do two separate lines that were basically moving in the same direction but i separated them by five thou yep. so that little bit of a difference you could add here so you could add a series of lines here that that step it down whatever you want but you'd have to have parallel lines here that are a certain distance apart just enough that SolidCamp recognizes them as separate lines, separate movements, and then you could get your, your spiraling going on there. Uh, and that probably wouldn't even take that long really to, uh, to draw. <laughs> but uh, uh, I want to get to another part just to show uh, some more manual turning, but with an even more unique uh, example. And then uh, if no one has any questions and they'd like to see it, we could pull this kind of uh, you know spiraling kind of uh, interesting thing. Uh, after the fact. So I, I actually want to do this. So if, I, if we don't do it yep. in SolidCam Live, I'm doing this immediately after this thing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get out of here and let's go to the <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, and the last one, which also appeared in the CavCam class on manual turning, is this grooved rod where we've got a series of grooves equal distant, but there's so many of them that if you were to do it with one single grooving operation and having to do, repeat it over and over again, or a single, just a single insert doing it, it might take a while. So what if you had a tool that looked like this, that actually has two inserts. Now inside SolidCam, what we did with this file was we actually kind of fudged it a little bit and said that there's only one insert because you can only define one insert. But with the STL holder that we defined here, again, a very simple, basic looking one, um, we're assuming that there's two. So how would you program something like this where there's multiple inserts and you want each insert to actually engage the material? Uh, that is with the manual turning. Because again, remember, it follows, a, um, it follows the chain that you select exactly by the reference point. So if we set it up in a way where that reference point is following the, the chain that you've selected, in this case, we just took a look at the first one, because remember there's two inserts, so I'm, I'm uh, defining it by that first insert, and I'm telling it to follow just that one line there. So in manual turning, what we get is something that looks like this. It's one insert that I'm telling it to engage, but you can see just because of the shape of it, it's actually doing two grooves at the same time. So if I step through that, it does one and another. So those are separate chains, but because of the way we've told it to retract and the safety of distance and all that, it's actually generating a toolpath that kind of looks like this. Just like we saw with the other one, separate chains, but it links them using the retractions. And this could be another one where, uh, with Kevin's spiraling idea, we probably could make this all one toolpath if we really wanted to control it a certain way. Uh, but this one's probably not necessary. Now, the drawback of this, though, is because you're only defining that one insert, if we go into turning, just bring this over here like this. It really only shows the work done by the first one. So there's a little bit of user understanding with this. You have to know that you're programming it a certain way. You know that that's, that what we see there is actually being doubled up by the, the fact that the tool is doing it. Oh, if you did solid verify, yeah. it won't really show it either. It'll give us a crash. 
Here, let's just do stop for this one. So same thing. Yeah. It doesn't show the interference of the STL. That's what I originally thought when we programmed this, but it doesn't show it. But uh, again, you know how you define your tool. You're doing manual turning, so there's a little bit of uh, user understanding on that one as well. So this is a great way to use that kind of multiple uh, multiple insert, uh, unique sort of programming. Um, but um, it's purely just the idea that you've chained something and you have a reference point on your tool and it's following that chain exactly. So any questions on any of those three files, any of those three ideas, anything else you'd like to cover today? Uh, otherwise, I'm going to go back to that part and, and uh, show you what I was talking about in terms of the, um, the spiraling. Quiet crowd. Quiet crowd, or they're just in anticipation of SolidCam Live doing this crazy. <laughs> and they're all laughing at you now. Yeah, probably. It's good. It's a good thing everybody's on mute, so they can't. <laughs> I can't hear them laughing and destroying my spirit on a Friday. Okay, here we go. So let's go back into Cam. The so right click, edit part. Let's go and edit that sketch. So originally I had separate sketches where I'm doing each one with some offset. I'm going to use the offset entity again, and I'm going to give us a little bit of a. Let's say we do this without chain. Let's just make this. 10 thou offset and then we'll just do so how many of these do we need we need one two three four five six and seven okay so let's go one uh oh i, I forgot we can't actually do this can we do this multiple times i always no. forget is there a way no. no can't okay so we have to keep uh keep this re uh doing the offset entities yeah, actually, there's probably an easier way. Let's do a linear of the X direction in SolidWorks. Okay, so we'll do that with a 10,000 step over. And entities to pattern, that one line. And we want to do that. Uh, I said seven. Oh no, that's the one. Am I missing something? Is uh, it... You didn't. You need to grab that uh, entities to pattern. Entities to pattern. No. Here, let's let's jump out and jump back in. So in the x direction, we're going to do seven of these with a distance of 10 thou entities. Womp, womp. Yep, it's all cam live. No, wait, looks like it's, no, that's something else. Okay, uh, for whatever reason, it's not doing what I wanted it to do. So what, what we're gonna do is we'll just draw them in like so, so one like that. Like double click. Uh, is it just double click? Yep. Yeah, Kevin is the king of the uh, the hotkeys. Although that line just disappeared. A double click. There it is. Okay. No, still not. No, it exited it out. Okay, I'm just going to do one more because I think we'll get the gist after this one. Okay, and then so we want to go one and then. Two, one, and then from that one, we want to go to that one. I don't even think you have to worry about that, Mark. Just use a point to point when you're picking your chain. Okay, yeah, it'll take it. All right, yep. so let's let's undo that last line, exit out of here, exit out of the part. Just quickly, just do a rebuild and save, just so we don't run into any issues, and then open this up. And now. Let the fun begin. Let's go to up to entity up to there, and then we'll do point to point to that point right there, right there. Yeah, so I guess we'll just keep doing point to point on this.
Uh, yeah, I think something. Yeah, and I think what it is is that that top where you're on the stock, it's all three of, or all four of those chains are all overlapping that exact same point, so it doesn't know. Uh, okay, so in that case, we would need spacing on the top yep. here. Yep, yep. All right. Well, we got some time. If anyone has any questions, uh, let's see. It's not the sketch, it's convert entity. Uh, is that what I was clicking on? Was I clicking on convert entity and not uh, not offset? Okay, let's make some lines here. So we're gonna go from there up to here. Uh, that line should be fine. And then we'll come over here down to this guy. And then from here, we'll go up and across to that one, down, there, there, and then and down. So do I got that right? Okay, we're going to go up to here, go to that line, goes down, goes there, goes up. Goes across. I think you have to extend that one past. Or just do point to point. Yeah, or do point to point. There you go. <laughs> point to point. Go over there. Go up here. Go over there. All right, let's just see what we got here. See if it does what we want it to do. It's going to be getting, crazy looking, but. You're getting dizzy watching you go around it. Yeah. And we're going to run out of time. But yeah, definitely what you could do here is you could do a series of just offsets really control it and if we're looking to get this kind of spiraling kind of move um the only thing though now that i think about it would this not just be continuous feed moves whereas originally this when we just chose this yes. one this would be we would have moves. rapids correct yeah okay so if yeah so in some instances that might not be exactly what we'd want but see what happens let's go down here 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 to here And I guess that's it. You yeah. may want to undo that last one just because it's intersecting. There you go. It might give us the intersection. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there we go. Here's our weird corkscrew. Let's see if it does it. Oh, Kevin's right. It's the overlap. So I'll step through the code. There's our nice little representation of it. Goes across. Up. Back. And this would work uh, for you guys that are in an extremely tight area, um, like with an internal bore, or you know, you have a really tight area groove that you need to get into. This would be the way to go just because you have full control over that and you can uh, set up those dimensions much easier in SOLIDWORKS by drawing that in there to keep that tool in that, that working space. So, yeah. So like the turning equivalent of that milling part from yesterday. Yep. Yeah. No, that's good. This is, this is actually kind of cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, so we are near the end of the session. If you have any other questions on this or anything else we've done through the week, through the previous videos, uh, you can send us an email with your questions, your, uh, your topics, your comments to the email that Kevin's gonna put in the chat section. Uh, what you'll do is you just send it to us and if we get it ahead of time, we can do it in the video, in, in the day that we, we, uh, we receive it. If not, it just goes on a list and we use that going forward. Uh, we'll be continuing this uh, at least until the end of the, the month, if not past it. Um, if you want your own personalized training, use that same email to contact me with the day and time that you're, that you're free, that you'd like to cover uh, any topics you, you have of interest, questions, parts that are challenging, anything like that. Just use that email day and time. I'll put you on the uh, training calendar. If you know anybody that can benefit from SolidCam, 
uh, send them our contact info or give them our number and they can call us. And if it goes into a demo, you get that $100, $100 gift card. If it goes to sale, you get 20% of that sale. So that's super useful, especially uh, nowadays. But uh, it, depending on what we sell them, you get that, that percentage. So that's a, that's a, that's a easy thing to do just for just letting us know someone's interested in, size, in, in getting solid cam. Um, but like I said, we'll be continuing this until the end of the month. So uh, every day until 2 p.m. We'll talk on Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Stay safe. Keep your family safe. Stay busy. We'll talk to you guys on Monday. All right. Have a great weekend, everyone.